Well, here we are back in the lab for week two of the nucleophilic substitution chemistry. We have made our product, and hopefully Zach and Nick, Zach and Alex survived. Still, week two, now we get to distill. This is a lot like the clove distillation, except it's a fractional distillation, which means as the product goes over, we're going to cut it into several portions. There is a picture in the lab manual of how to set it up and what it looks like. However, we're not going to use these round bottom flasks. We're going to use Erlenmeyer's. So, watch carefully. Here we go. Off we go. We need to have something to heat with. And we need to have a 100 milliliter flask with a stir bar. And it goes up, goes the flask. Carefully clamped, everything is in its proper place, and I should put my goggles on. So here we are, there. Now you notice I have the stir plate at the bottom, and I've left enough space that I can get the heating mantle out. This is very important. So there we go. We have the fractionating column. This one is called a Vigru column. It's got funny points in it, and it's a French name. And off it goes, right in there, and you'll notice I have a second clamp right here. This is going to make sure that the apparatus does not fall over. Falling over is bad. Once again, the magic of rubber bands holds our pieces together. We have the still head, a cooling condenser, and the vacuum takeoff. There we are. Nice. So. That goes in that position there. Cooling water. Water always goes in the bottom and out the top. That way the bubbles leave. If we have a condenser full of bubbles, it will not be cooling. So there, we have our cooling. Now, the Erlenmeyer flask is clamped such that it will indeed collect our products as we distill. We also require a thermometer adapter and a thermometer. Now this is very tricky. If you do this wrong, you will break the thermometer and drive it into your hand and get scars, kind of like this one and this one. So very carefully, holding it close together, you push it in. No harm, no foul. That is positioned at the top. And the thermometer bulb must be below the exit point. So we just tease it down a little bit lower. I have the space to take the heating mantle on and off, and now I can raise up and I have my completed apparatus. Of course, using a long stem plastic funnel, pop that in there, your product from week one, and it goes. The long stem funnel makes sure it goes all the way down. At this point we can replace the thermometer. Oh, and if you don't have enough product for the distillation, I just happened to save it from previous years, so we can give you some. There we go. We can start our stirring. The heating mantle is plugged into the power supply. The power supply is plugged into the wall. This one, you gotta start slow. If you overheat this, it'll all come over in one fell swoop and you won't get any separation at all. We go slowly, we go carefully, and we might need some insulation just to make things work a little better. So we can wrap tin foil around the vertical column. It aids the process, things go much more smoothly, and you get a better separation. That's your setup for week two, Chem 2700. Have fun. So here we are, Chem 2700 lab, second half of nucleophilic substitution. We need to do some gas chromatography on our product. Zach here is going to 
insert a sample into the gas chromatographic instrument. He's all nervous uh, now. <laughs> okay. Do it, man. You're wasting time. I can't cut this down. I don't know how to edit. I don't have the software to edit this. Okay, there he goes. And he injects the sample. Excellent. And pulls up the needle and pushes the start button. There we go. And over here on the computer screen, we can pretend that something's happening. As you can see, the time is running, and there's a little line down there at the bottom of the screen. And this is where we sit and stare. So, a gas chromatograph is a box with a pressure control and a temperature control and an inlet for injecting the sample. And there's a coil that's got some white stuff in it, works just like thin layer chromatography. And there's a detector, and we get a signal out, that, out of that and pretend it means something. Isn't that cool? So, back over here, we have. Zach's results and there we see the first peak has come off and now the second peak is working its way through the system. So here you have the mixture of chlorobutane and bromobutane analyzed by gas chromatography. This is your crude sample. The ratio of the areas of these two peaks is directly proportional to the mole ratios of the compounds present, which means you got to do some math. There we go, just about done. We'll print that off and send these guys home. Okay, a couple more points to mention. We need you to make a graph of temperature versus time while you do the distillation. This is a very useful exercise because you see the profile as the compounds distill, what the temperature is and how long it takes. Ideally, you get a nice curve with a couple of plateaus. In practice, not always so good. but practice is what it's all about. You'll get better. Now, at the present we only have one functioning gas chromatograph, so we can't do a, a bazillion different samples. So we're going to ask you to take your fractions down to two. You're going to collect the first 10 mils in Erlenmeyer number one, and then after that you will switch to the second Erlenmeyer and continue the distillation. You don't have to distill it all, but the idea is you'll get, say, 10 mils in the first flask, 20 mils in the second. Then we can analyze those by GC and determine the percentages of chlorobromo in the two portions. That seems to be just about it. Please read your lab manual and see you in the lab.